Uh, this is different. This feels different. No substitute for Bedlam. South for a number of years, but we remember him in college. This looks a lot like Kyler Murray. The improvisation, the acceleration, and the speed. We all remember this run against Florida State back in 99, but that's the only guy, Steve, that I can compare Kyler Murray's talent to. We will watch for that all afternoon. Here come the Sooners. First down to 10 for the 25. Trey Sermon had a monster game a week ago, and he's got the ball, and he's got a big game on first down. Turns the edge, and he's down the sideline. Trey Sermon, and that's how you start a football game. Kenneth Edison Magruder ran him out, but not until Sermon ripped off 60. Right off the bat, Oklahoma State defensively breakdown in their gaps. The corner is responsible. It's A.J. Green. He had a play like this last week, gave up a long touchdown run, and it happens on the first snap of the game here against Oklahoma. Sermon rushed for 26 times for 206 yards and three scores a week ago, including a 20 and 30 yard touchdown to put the game away. On the ground, it's Murray, the quarterback, trying to make some people miss. Down to the six. Again, it's Edison Magruder on the stop. Look at the right side of the screen. You're going to see the corner, A.J. Green. He's running down with, the, with Marquise Brown, but you got to keep your eyes in the backfield. And the way that Oklahoma want to start this football game, people, they all talk about Marquise Brown and C.D. Lamb and Kyler Murray in the passing game. This offense is predicated on physical downhill run with this offensive line. Murray gets six. They're inside the 10 on second and four. C.D. Lamb in motion. It's Sermon. Tripped up just shy of the goal line. Trey Sermon with that game last week, reminding everybody he's the guy. Kennedy Brooks has provided a few sparks. And now we find out, Reese, there's nobody else. It is Sermon and Brooks. And that's about it. Two healthy scholarship runners available for Oklahoma today. We were just informed prior to kick, no TJ Pledger today. Of course, they already lost Marcellius Sutton. Rodney Anderson went down in game number two. That's Murray, top of your screen. Wildcat. Sermon will take the direct snap. And lower his shoulder into the end zone for a touchdown. And that's how this one starts. All on the legs of Trey Sermon. 6-0 Sooners. So much about emotion in the first quarter of these games. And when you want to take over control of the game, if you're Oklahoma, do it with this offensive line up front. That was all on the ground for seven points to start the game. Here's Mr. Automatic, Austin Seibert on the kick. The, the engine for Oklahoma. We know about all the skilled players, but the fellas up front don't get enough love. You're going to love watching these guys play in this game today. Take a look. These guys up front, Drew Samaya, Cody Ford. This is a couple weeks ago against TCU. Each one of these guys on a touchdown run is locked up on their man. You see Bobby Evans with a pancake. Cody Ford's driving his guys five yards into the end zone. They finish better than any offensive line in college football. They are downright nasty up front, and it's the reason why this Oklahoma offense is so explosive. Four plays, 75 yards. Took a whole minute 44 off the clock. 
That's how you welcome your rival to your stadium. No question. You see, that's uh, their offensive line coach, Bill Beatenbow, who has uh, orchestrated this offensive line. Really, the key for them up front has been their center, Creed Humphrey. He's been kind of the glue that has, has kept them together. He's the new guy. He's talking to Coach Beatenbow right there. One of the more talented centers in all of college football, and his head coach thinks he's one of the most talented on this team. Chuba Hubbard is back for Oklahoma State. We'll see how the Cowboys can answer. The start from the 20. Comes out throwing and able to complete to Dylan Stoner. That's 22 consecutive games with at least a catch for Stoner. They've got the first down. Cowboys on the move. We're going to see a lot. Mostly this offense is throwing the football with Cornelius. Obviously, Justice Hill is a talented young back. But they got to they got to loosen up this defense. I don't think that they need to be in a big hurry. I think anytime they can protect their defense and keep Kyle Murray off the field is a good thing. Go well, with the Army strategy. <laughs> On the ground, Justice Hill and nothing doing. Amani Bledsoe had a monster game a week ago. Was in the middle of everything for that Sooners defense. That was the game last week. Beat Texas Tech 51-46. And what was another wild game? And Oklahoma State, they come off a difficult loss at Baylor. Lost by four when they had a 10-point lead with less than six minutes to play. That was a real kick in the butt for Oklahoma State. Second down and nine. Here's Cornelius. Looks strong in the pocket. Fires across the middle. And Tyler Wallace could not hang on. That would have been a big game. There are a couple of flags on the field. Tyler Wallace should have caught this football. But look, he takes one, two, three steps. And then Robert Barnes comes up and hits him. And that's that's just the emotion of a rivalry game. And you, we started out with Justice Hill in the Instagram post. And Robert Barnes was one of the guys he was calling out. And he let the, get the best First of it. First foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 20 of the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Personal fouls and penalties were an issue for both of these squads one week ago. Oklahoma was fortunate to win their game a week ago despite all the penalties they had. And both coaches made that uh, front page headline news talking about the penalties last week. Look at that, 12 for Oklahoma State. And that was the reason, the number one reason they lost to Baylor, gave up those points in the fourth quarter. So the Cowboys are bailed out by the penalty. Cornelius taking a shot down the field. Right back to Wallace. And he's got him for the score. Tylen Wallace. They're going to mark him short of the goal line. We were going to give him a 50-yard score. Looks like it might just be a 49-yard catch. Let's see the knee the drops. The of the runner short of the goal line is under further review. Reese, I I know where you're going here. You have to love the confidence of the quarterback to go right back to him after the drop, too. Well, there's no question, and that looks like it looks like that was a good call. That knee was down. The football did not cross the plane there. It's a great look at it from right down the line. But what a great play call there from Oklahoma State. You get you have the drop, as you mentioned, then you Barnes gives you the, the opportunity to take that shot from midfield. And Tylen Wallace, if you haven't seen this kid play football, he is one of the more outstanding receivers in all of college football. You see his over a thousand yards already on the season. That's fourth all college football and is an unbelievable target for Tyler Cornelius. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Short of the goal line, first down, Oklahoma State. We're going to see this time and time again. Oklahoma State attacking the weakness of Oklahoma's defense, which is that secondary. And any time that Tylen Wallace is matched up man-to-man, -man, whether it's against Trey Bound, Norwood, or Motley, they're going to take their shots down the field. First and goal from inside the one. They got three of those cowboy backs, as they call it, for Oklahoma State. On the ground. Justice Hill will get credit for the touchdown. Here's Matt Amendola for the extra point. Kicks it through. Veterans Day tomorrow.
call this Veterans Weekend. Hopefully some of you will enjoy a day on Monday. Celebrate Veterans Day week, if you will. Can't thank all the brave people, men and women, protecting us in the past, the present, and in the future. Seven seven early on here, and if you look at you're interested in such things, the Cowboys come in. The, let's say three touchdown underdogs in this one, yeah, just about. But they've had experience in this role you see since 2001. They've been 18 plus point dogs three times, and they have won two of those games, both here in Norman, one under Les Miles, and then obviously in 2014 under Mike Gundy. So they know how to put this upset together. First down and 10 out of the 25-yard line following the touchback. Kyler Murray has yet to throw a pass today. On the young afternoon, that's C.E. Lamb. The emotion. On the ground, and Trey Sermon. Why wouldn't you? Tries the left side for four. Malcolm Rodriguez came up to make the stop. So listen, you know, this is eye-popping elsewhere. Maybe we shouldn't be surprised by these, these numbers, the early scores, this kind of game, this kind of rivalry, this conference. No, it's almost a redundant shootout, yeah. Here's Kyler Murray. All sorts of time. Lost one down the sideline and is caught. Carson Meyer calls it in. Rodriguez was all over him. And Meyer, the fifth-year senior from Tulsa, makes the grab for 31. Now, Oklahoma only has three starters on this team from the state of Oklahoma. You think that Carson Meyer knows what this rivalry is all about to make that kind of play from his fullback position? What a catch. Pretty nice throw for Murray on his first toss of the game. And they are across midfield, already at the Oklahoma State 40. First down and 10. Murray to throw again. Underneath to CeeDee Lamb. And he is upended inside the 30, dropped by A.J. Green. See CeeDee Lamb, they're going to try to get him the ball as much as they possibly can. He's the bigger of the two target wide receivers of Marquise Brown, but that's just a shallow cross. Get him the football, let him run. Right back to Sermon. Not much doing there. Justin Phillips makes the stop. Phillips, the leader on that Oklahoma State defense, really taking the place of Darian Daniels, who is injured. Yeah, Phillips needs to lead this defense today. There is no way around this offensive line. You're going to have to fit it up, be in your gap. You're going to have to get off blocks because guys like Cody Ford and Bobby Evans pulling around on that last play, you have to make them miss and get in the backfield and be disruptive. Second down and 10 now. Just inside the 30. Pick up some blitz. Murray trying to get out of there. The escapability. Throwing on the run and completing. It's Sermon out of the backfield on the receiving end. Jordan Brailford, they love to move him around. Trying to get to the quarterback. Oklahoma State number one of the country in sacks. Not this time. You're going to see the blitz come from the outside. Brailford. He gets there, but you got to get him on the ground. Just because you get in the backfield doesn't mean that you get Kyler Murray, and that looks exactly like Michael Vick running to his left, making that play very hard to defend. Sermon out, Kennedy Brooks in. Lamb again in motion, top of your screen. It's Kennedy Brooks, the ball carrier. And he is dragged down shy of the goal line. Great tackle, great individual tackle by Justin Phillips to prevent the touchdown. There's so much pressure when, when Oklahoma starts to run their counter with both the guard and tackle coming around. As you see, Trey Sermon comes off, and that's very, very costly for, for OU because of the fact that they've lost three running backs out in this game. One for the season, and Rodney Anderson and Marcella Sutton, but not out there today is T.J. Pledger. So right now, Kenny Brooks, the only healthy back. Second and goal inside the one. Kennedy Brooks making it look easy. His seventh rushing touchdown of the season. And Oklahoma back on top. This is an offense that has scored 50 points five times. Scored 49 against UCLA. 
Seems like a long time ago. The last time they've scored 50 points in four consecutive games, you got to go all the way back. It's, just, it's not that far. Away. <laughs> it's only three years ago. I mean, we should get used to this stuff. From Last week couldn't have gone any worse for Lincoln Riley to start the Texas Tech game. They threw two interceptions. They were down 14 nothing. In this game, they've done it on the ground and now through the air with Kyler Murray, and they're up 14-7. Three possessions in the game, three touchdowns as advertised. Our thanks to Josh and Travis. All they do. Shay. Yeah, Todd will be interesting to see how Oklahoma decides to play him now, whether they roll the safety over the top. Cornelius comes out throwing. It's Dylan Stoner, his second grab. He'll be short of the marker. I don't think that Ruffin McNeil is going to want to make a living leaving his corners, whether it's Trey Bown or Trey Norwood or Parnell Motley, matched up in man-to-man -man on Tylen Wallace. So that should allow Oklahoma State a little bit more room to run the ball with Justice Hill. Game number four with Ruffin McNeil as defensive coordinator. Plays Mike Stoops. Heading into the bye week off the loss against Texas. The only loss for Oklahoma on the season. Second and short. See how the Cowboys play this. Off the play fake. Good protection. Cornelius throwing, and it is almost caught. What a catch that would have been by Dylan Stoner. Reaching out with the right hand. Look at this. He almost brought that in. That would that would have been so that would have made you top ten on sports. That there would have been top ten there? Yes. We don't have. We have a top ten, a not top ten. And it would have been now. Would have been top ten. Just falls to the loud incompletion there. Third down and two. Oklahoma was bringing the pressure. And the Cowboys pass the other way to Landon Wolf for the first down. We kind of wondered how, in a big game, in a big spot like this, how would Taylor Cornelius respond? He has been on target. They upset Texas, and a big reason why was because of the arm of Taylor Cornelius, and he's on point early. Justice Hill for a few. You know, we wondered about the Oklahoma defense under Ruff and McNeil and had those first couple games. It sort of shut down TCU, held to 27, held Kansas State to 14. And we're like, hey, well, based on those two offenses, it's hard to see. And then last week against Texas Tech, yeah. still allowed 46 points. Yeah, I think it's everybody knows it's still a work in progress. And Ruffin knows that. I think he knows the strength of the defense is up front in the front seven. Really, to where they need to continue to grow and get better is in, in that secondary. Second down and eight. And a flag as you jumped. All start. Offense number 27. Five yard penalty. Second down. That's the back. JD King. You're always immediately going to the offensive line. And this has been a banged up offensive line that's been filled sort of by musical chairs. They're without Arlington Hambright today. Shane Richards. Two tackles, two backups, but two back uh, tackles who did not even make the trip. Yeah, and Oklahoma needs to take advantage of that. They have the advantage up front with the defensive line with Gallimore and Bledsoe and Ken Mann. They have got to affect the quarterback. Off the play fake, Cornelius to throw. And instead, he'll just throw it away. So, Greece, so J.D. King commits the penalty, and he was taken out of the game instantly, okay? Yep. Now, it was second and 13, so maybe that was by design, or... It's because Mike Gundy said, we will cut down on the dumb penalties. Guys are coming out of the game, and they'll stand next to me on the sideline. Yeah, I mean, he's done all kinds of, of things to try to, to stem the number of penalties. And finally, he's at his wits end. He says, listen, if you make a dumb penalty, you're coming out of the game. You're going to stand next to me. And he's kind of at the end of his patience, and I don't blame him. And some penalties are better than others, but you know, false starts and mental mistakes, certainly on sportsman likes. Here's third and 13. Cornelius with a man and a hand in his face, able to complete to Tylen Wallace for the first down. Trey Norwood had the coverage to gain a 17. Good thing Cornelius goes 6-6. Six, six. Todd was talking about Wallace, and look at the, the attention to detail. Getting open, using his hands at the top of the route, and being a friendly wide receiver gets the first down. Cornelius off to Wallace again. 
First down yardage is down at the 30. He was taken down by Robert Barnes. Tylen Wallace, 970 receiving yards, Greece. Wait for it. Before contact. That's a lot of yards. That's number two of the nation. Get a 13 there. Here's Hill as they mix the moment to pass. And if I'm, if I'm Oklahoma State, I'm going as fast as possible right now. We've got Oklahoma on the ropes. Defensively, throwing the ball. Cornelius is confident. Wallace is getting hot. I'd, I'd ratchet up the tempo if I had Mike Denver. Cornelius, 6 of 8 throwing for 107 yards so far. Six and a half to play in an energetic first quarter. Cornelius, the pump, and it costs him. He's taken down back at the 31 by Curtis Bolton. This is a coverage sack. Nowhere to go with this football. This pocket is pristine initially right now. The ball should come out. Wants to throw it, but coverage downfield, and Bolton finally gets to Cornelius. Big play for Oklahoma defense. One of the few California players on the Sooners. Curtis Bolton, the fifth-year senior. Third down and 11. Able to convert on the first two. Oklahoma looked a little bit confused there. Two to snap it. Yeah. No way they got that off. Let's see if they got a timeout. And they did. Prior to the snap, Oklahoma State takes their first time out of the half. It'll be a media break. All right, Matt, thank you. And just in time, as we welcome you back for a third down and 11 from the 31 of the Sooners. Cornelius with some pressure up the middle. Throws for the end zone. It is caught. It's Tyron Johnson for the score for 31 yards. And we go back and forth. Matt Amendola on to try to square this game up. Five and a half to play in the first quarter. And the home defense. Well, yeah, everybody's had questions about Oklahoma's defense, but certainly their offense has masked a lot of that. Of course, listen, here's Trey Brown now. And he is bumped backwards. Bumped down to the 15-yard line. Devin Harper on the special team stop. We'll get a chance to see Kyler Murray again, his turn. This fifth drive, but there's there. This is people need to understand this. Okay, yes, Tua is having a great year. Kyler Murray is having just as good a season as Tua Tungavailoa, and and people I don't think are giving him enough credit. Everybody's kind of giving Tua the Heisman. Kyler Murray's going to be in New York with every opportunity to win the Heisman. He is a special player. There is no question. You think about the Heisman Trophy. No program has ever had consecutive Heisman Trophy quarterbacks. And, of course, people want to compare this offense to last year's offense, led by Baker Mayfield, who won the Heisman Trophy. There's Kennedy Brooks. He stopped by Justin Phillips. You can't imagine the pressure, right? You could argue that Kyler Murray had more pressure on him coming into this season than any player in the country because of what he had to step into with Baker Mayfield. And he's not only played uh, his part, he, you could argue he has played better than Baker Mayfield, and this offense is more explosive this year than it was a year ago. And it's definitely more efficient. Mayfield, by the way, threw for 598 yards in Bedlam a year ago. So we'll keep an eye on Kyler Murray, who's 3-for-3 three for, three for 65 yards so far. He's got a ways to go. He will look to add to that here. Wide open is Lee Morris. The ball just comes out of his hand so effortlessly. Well, this is a, this is showing you the arm strength of Kyler Murray. Want to question that? This is a whole shot in the middle of two deep defense. You're gonna have a corner here and a safety back here, and this ball has to be thrown on a line. It's a great read from Kyler Murray, understanding where the weakness of that defense is, and then the arm strength to put that ball in there. 28 yards there. When Morris makes a grab, you're almost surprised it's not a touchdown. Came in with 16 catches on the season, eight of them for scores. That one just went for 28 for Lee Morris. First down and 10 at midfield. Murray running away from people. Takes a pretty good stick down at the 44-yard line. Hit by Malcolm Rodriguez. 
when, when he gets up, Kyler Murray, the one thing he does not like on the football field, he does not like to get hit. Baseball player. Okay. And he got hit there from, from Edison Magruder, who came down from his safety spot. But if you're going to beat this young man, that's what you need to do. You need to hit him when they run the ball with him between the tackles. It's easier said than done, though. That is one of the matchups, but great offensive line for Oklahoma against the number one sack team in the nation, this Oklahoma State defense. Here's Murray to throw off his back foot. Doesn't even need to step into that for a short gain. Again, it's Lee Morris. Got the first down, Kennedy Brooks. Stumbles forward for a couple. Bradford made the stop. So, Steve, I think it's worth mentioning, you know, Kennedy Brooks in the game. We haven't seen Trey Sermon since that last run where he came off the field a little bit gimpy. So they, they may need to be a little careful with Kennedy Brooks, how many carries they give him because he's a young player uh, as a redshirt freshman. And you don't want to overload him knowing you don't have much or anything behind him. On the ground, the swing it to Brooks. It's another touch for him. It is impressive without Rodney Anderson that they are still the number one rushing team in the Big 12, number 12 in the country. Again, when you lose a talent like Rodney Anderson, he's a tough story, right? Third season ending injury for him. Well, Todd McShay's been looking at his tape. Hopefully, he'll be playing on Sunday for the NFL. You see that Trey Sermon has really stepped up for them. But uh, without those three guys at the bottom, and if Trey Sermon is still on the sideline, not to go here, well, Lincoln Riley gets a credit to him recruiting-wise that he's got this kind of depth. Third and four. Boy, he's got all sorts of time. Waits for Brown to come underneath, and he's one move. Did not get there. Wonder if they let him a face mask at the end. Calvin Bundage came up to make the stop and got a fourth down. This is amazing. This is one of the fastest players in college football, Marquise Brown. And that's a linebacker in Bundage trying to catch him. It looked like that hand was up around the face mask. Didn't pull him down by that. But, you know, Marquise Brown has been hurt. He had an ankle in the TCU game. He has not been 100%, Steve, I don't think. Typically, he catches that ball, and he's like a rocket to get a first down. Going for it on fourth and one. For the eighth time all season, they'll go for it on fourth down. Hands it off to Sermon. Second, third, and fourth ever gets him the fresh set of downs. Great news for Oklahoma. They get the first down, but even better that Trey Sermon is okay to come back in this football game. And right after that fourth down, he's going to come out. Looks like Lincoln Riley might take this a little bit cautious with, with Sermon being nicked up. He'll give the bulk of the load to Kennedy Brooks and just use Sermon maybe in short, uh, short yardage and goal line situation. So a big play there to keep the drive alive. Here's Murray on the quick throw to Miles. Tease. Tease making people miss. And he's down inside the 10 yard line. Miles T's first catch of the game, sixth of the season. It's a game of 17. This is an extension of the run game, right? If you're a little bit light, a little bit banged up at running back, then you can supplement if you're Lincoln Riley by throwing these swing routes to these wide receivers, the bubble screens. That's just an extension of that run game. Tenth play of the drive upcoming, 45 seconds to play in the quarter four possessions four touchdowns it's a good day for the punters to take the afternoon off on first down and goal right into the middle of the line is kennedy brooks enoch smith leading the party for the Cowboys defense. Well, Cowboys defensively, you know you're going to give up some yards. When you get into the red zone, you got to prevent points. And nice job by Enoch Smith. And, and Jim Knowles, their defensive coordinator, knows that they have to move their defensive line up front. They can't just be static, come off the ball, because Oklahoma's offensive line will blow you out of the stadium. They've got to move up front. A nice job by Enoch Smith with the tackle for loss. Oklahoma State's red zone defense is excellent. Second in the conference, 11th in the country. That's it quarter number one. We'll be back after this message from your local ABC station. 14 all Bedlam. The courageous soldiers, the men and the women protecting us from around the globe. Proudly showing off their school pride 
We thank you all for your service. There's bedlam everywhere you look. Good on those people. Can't thank you enough. Veterans Day, Veterans Weekend, Veterans Week. Let's get the whole month. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, and Todd McShay. The 113th edition of Bedlam here in Norman, Oklahoma. Tied at 14. We've had four possessions, four touchdowns as we welcome you back. This is the fifth possession of the game. Oklahoma on second down and goal from the nine. Marquise Brown get the football in his hands any way they can. And he'll just cut it up to get back to the line of scrimmage. Malcolm Rodriguez made sure of that. Yeah, really nice job by Oklahoma State defensively. I think they're keying now on Marquise Brown, knowing that Lincoln Riley needs to be a little bit more creative with the thin running back group. They're going to give Marquise Brown some rushes. He only comes into this game with one, one rush on the season. But they're trying creative ways to get the run game going. Rodriguez up to five tackles so far to lead the way for that Cowboys defense. So here's third and goal from the nine. Four seconds to snap and make it three. Let's see if they got the timeout in time. Prior to the snap, delay a game, offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. Did not push him back. Yep, this has been an issue for, for Oklahoma. They've been doing more checking this season with Kyler Murray than, than even they did a year ago. So this is not a matter of the play coming in late. It's just they're, they're making a lot of checks at the line of scrimmage, and you got to keep your eye on that play clock. And it costs them now third and goal from the 14. Kyler Murray, just his 14th start. Had the three starts back at AM. At the one short start for Baker Mayfield a season ago. And then all this time. Still two to snap this one. Finally get it away. Here's Murray under pressure. The last second gets it off to Sermon. Stays inbounds and then is bumped out. We'll see where they mark him out. They're going to say back at the four-yard line. Improvisation by Kyler Murray. Yeah, no question. Jim Knowles, defensive coordinator, decided to bring an all-out pressure. Kyler Murray sees it. This is just like an option. Turns into a scramble and an option. And Trey Sermon almost makes an unbelievable effort to get to the end zone, but that's the right call. He steps out at about the three-and-a-half-yard line. But what could have been disastrous is a ten-yard gain. <laughs> that's about how it's gone for right. Oklahoma this year offense. Yeah. Turn nothing into something. Austin Seibert is on. Chip shot, 21 yards away, it's good. And there is news, five possessions, not five touchdowns. Two and a half quarters in that game, and that's 21 points in the fourth quarter uh, to kind of get that game as close as it was, Todd. Desmond, Desmond picked Boston College to beat him tonight, Greece. Okay. Win the game outright. Here's Cornelius throwing and completing. It's Jelani Woods on the reception, like the tight end, but they call him a cowboy back. It's a gain of 15. Cornelius lost one down the sideline, got a man too far for Tylen Wallace. Had a step, not enough. We were watching film of, Ohio, of uh, Oklahoma State yesterday, and they run a lot of double moves with Tylen Wallace on the outside. That's exactly what that was. They got Trey Norwood. He bit on the on the out route. Just a little hook and go. Just a little stutter step. That's all you need. And you look back, and if this ball was on target, would have been another touchdown. Cornelius has been on target for the most part. 8 of 11, 153 yards, and the one touchdown. Chuba Hubbard in the backfield. Nearly a decoy. Tyron Johnson makes the grab. His second, it's a first down. Working on Parnell Motley for a gain of 11. Another thing I noticed about Oklahoma State offensively is if you give these receivers free access, then Cornelius will take it every time. Watch the throw again. Down the middle of the field. Has Wallace and has another touchdown. Beating Trey Norwood. Cornelius to Wallace for 49 of the score. To this point, he's just not holding up in cover. Can't run with him, Todd. Oh. That's a 33-yard scoring drive. This game hurt, not able to go, and Jordan Parker not in position to help on the touchdown. 33 seconds to score for Oklahoma State to take the lead. Here's Trey Brown. 
see what he can do. Brown trying to make some people miss. He's out to the 22-yard line. That's where the Sooners will take over. Here's Matt Bar Barry with an up. I hear Pacheco. I'm thinking he's related. Fernie, the fight doctor. <laughs> Offensive explosion. Check out my drive chart. Wow. That's how I roll. 38 points, 449 yards of offense. And we are on pace to obliterate last year's record for points in Bedlam. And Kyler Murray slides into second base. You got to call holding on the edge. I think Coach Gundy runs holding on the edge. Just a guess. <laughs> Mike Gundy wants a win in this series. You know, he kind of downplayed the rivalry in talking to him this week, and maybe that's because he's 2-11 and 11 in this Bedlam series. He said, look, we got, we got to get the kids excited every week. If we make this game to be more important than another game, it makes things difficult. Here's Murray going to take off. Kyler Murray cross midfield, and he'll scamper out of bounds. Gundy also said that Murray, when he scrambles, it's not for a first down. It's to get 60. This is amazing, right? He, he's rolling out here. He wants to throw the ball deep. And Oklahoma State does a nice job of covering deep. But if you don't have the lanes, he is so fast, so explosive. And this is Michael Vick. That's what that is. You get to the second level, and you're lucky if you can lay a finger on the kid, much less get him on the ground. 29 yards on that scamper, if you will, for Kyler Murray. He was the first... Oklahoma player to ever have 300 yards passing, 100 yards rushing in a game. Did that a week ago. Kennedy Brooks breaking through people. Here's Brooks coming the outside for the touchdown. Could have gone to Sermon or Brooks. It's 45 yards for the score. And we go back and forth. up front by Samaya, the right guard, 75. Here he is. He's going to pull around and get the block. And then downfield blocking by C.D. Lamb. There's the kick out. Great cut. And then look at C.D. Lamb downfield. Look at this block down here. Unbelievable job by C.D. Lamb. Austin Seibert on for the extra point. Seibert is already the career leader in points for Oklahoma. He will add to that. You get catches, you get touchdowns, you get all the glory, but if you're not doing this, you're not playing for Oklahoma. Great job, number two. Congratulations. You are the all-time leading scorer in Big 12 history. How about that? And he now needs just 43 points to be the all-time leading scorer in FBS history by any kicker who's ever played the game. Pretty impressive stuff. And so far, they have not been in this game. They have got to figure a way to get a stop. Not been all season. On the ground, here's Justice Hill. Staying on his feet, Justice Hill. Playing some big boy football across midfield. And he's in a Sooners territory down to the 45 after a gain of 28. Well, the missed tackles are starting to pile up for Oklahoma. Kenneth Mann, the middle linebacker, number nine, had a chance here. And uh, just right there is, is Brown. And Hill gets to the second level. They've beaten Oklahoma through the air predominantly, and now they're getting this run game going because Ruff McNeil has to protect these corners and take the safety out of the box. On first down and 10, back to the passing game. Cornelius, the throw, had a man wide open, and he skipped it to Landon Wolf. Boy, another gaping hole in this defense. Just a pump outside on the swing route, and it comes wide open to Landon Wolf on the wheel, and that, that wasn't even in the neighborhood. He might have lost that in the sun, too. The glare, wearing the shield. Yeah, there's, that wasn't on the receiver, the Wolf. That ball just not thrown far enough outside. You look into that greasy all afternoon. <laughs> Man who wears his sunglasses at night. Here's Cornelius, not that time. Neville Gallimore drops him. The junior from St. Catharines. Second sack of the game for Oklahoma. Talked about the advantage that Oklahoma does have defensively. They should be able to get after this offensive line. It's been 
wrecked with injuries and that time nice rush from Gallimore brings up an opportunity here third and long to get off the field for Oklahoma and the drama and the intrigue that we might actually have a punt There's still a lot of confusion in the secondary for Oklahoma three to snap it one zeros to see if they got the timeout and they did timeout Oklahoma State their second of the half it'll be a media break Compete. here's third and 18 across the middle into the shadows and behind Tyler Wallace could not come up with the grab and there was a window there to make that first down. Wallace was coming on an inside, got a skinny post, and you'll see from, from Taylor Cornelius, he's just looking off the safety, and right there when he throws, there's the lane. He just missed it by a foot. If it was out in front of uh, Wallace, that would have been a first down. And so Bedlam chatter afterwards with Carter, Curtis Bolton. And here's a punt. Hey, look here. Zach Siner is on to kick it away. Got some late outside pressure. C.D. Lamb from the six. Trying to make some people miss. Turns on the Jets. Has plenty of running down the sideline. Picks up some blocks. And it'll be out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. Malcolm Rodriguez able to force him out, but it's a return of 64 yards after the 50-yard punt. Yeah, it was a 50-yard punt, but there wasn't a whole lot of hang time on it. It got down there quick, and C.D. Lamb, and look at the room he has to make a move. And you got to take your shot. When you're on the coverage team, you got to take your shot when you had it. And down there, Malik Givens, the safety, just tried to keep him contained rather than tackling him and gave up a big return. Lamb had a 66-yard punt return against UCLA earlier this season in the second game. So the 64-yard return right now and has Oklahoma set up in excellent field position. Already leading by three, 10 to play in the first half. They start this drive at the plus 29. Murray on the ground to Trey Sermon for a couple. He knocks Smith. To stop. Prior to that punt, we had 47 snaps in the game. Only six of them had been on third or fourth. Here's a second and nine. Murray trying to get out of trouble. Thought he was throwing it away, and it's Marquise Brown who comes back to make a play for his quarterback. Radarius Williams following him around the field. I don't think that Kyler Murray is capable of giving up on a play. And if you had this talent, why would you? Look, he's face one way, goes the other way. That's a that's a safety that's chasing. Not, a, not an outside linebacker or defensive end. And he's just toying with guys. And buys himself a little time and then finds Marquise Brown for the outlet. I mean, it's amazing what number one in, in Crimson can do. And he's 10 for 10. <laughs> of course he is. Yes. 134 yards. That's Trey Sermon, the running back at the top of your screen. They spread him out. Third down and seven. Murray underneath crossing to Brown's got the first down. So much speed on the field, Todd. And with Kyler, I think another part of that two plays ago was his ability to extend that play, but also having a receiver that he trusts. I mean, he had to throw that ball up to, to get it out. He put it up and he knew his receiver, Brown, was going to come back and make the play, and that's exactly what he did. He's a winner. 43-0 as a high school player. He's only lost one game in his career, and that was the Texas earlier this year, but he knows how to win, and last week we, we learned that he can also compete and come back from adversity, those two interceptions to start the game. It's a distant memory now. Murray throws for the end zone looking for Grant Calcaterra. That was one of the interesting conversations about Murray 
Everybody was wondering how would he handle a little adversity. The two picks last week, two interceptions on his first four throws, and even Lincoln Riley had been. I was curious to see how he'd respond. And the conversation on the sideline immediately afterwards, Riley said it was like another Monday conversation. Yeah. So calm, so cool and collected, never gets too high or too low. The thing I liked last week was the leadership. Because everybody on that team was looking to him. How is he going to respond? Not only did he do it on the field, but he did it on the sideline as well and, and picking some of his teammates up during the course of that game. Love the snap and barely got that one away. Murray off his first incompletion comes back to CD Lamb. Look at the save was out of bounds. Well, it certainly looked like CD Lamb. Had a foot come down, that ball perfectly thrown. An eye on that left. Oh, yeah, his hand came down out of bounds first. Great call by the official. Colby Peel had the coverage. True freshman from College Station. And give Peel credit, too. He came over, didn't give up on the play, and hit C.D. Lamb, and that's what caused the, the hand to come down first. It looked like a foot was going to come down in bounds had Peel not pushed him out. Credit left and right to the ref the officials today. Like it. Called a good game in a spot, and now we got some flags. Let's check on this prior to the third and ten. Ball start. Offense number 71. Five yard penalty. Third down. That's Bobby Evans, the left tackle. Junior from Allen, Texas. And an opportunity here for Oklahoma State defensively after the long punt return. Oklahoma had great field position and now Oklahoma with opportunity to get off the field in a third and 14 15 situation. And that's just the fourth penalty of the game. Yeah that was a major story coming in for both programs who combined for 23 penalties a week ago. These safeties are really tight. Maybe a pressure situation. Again have Sermon and Brooks together in the backfield. It's Sermon bouncing off some people. And trying to make a move or two. And to bring up a fourth down and long. Well, that's a win, right, for Oklahoma State. No question. Force that field goal attempt and keep this a one-score game, potentially. Anytime you can hold Oklahoma to a field goal is a victory for the other team. Here's Austin Seibert. This will be from 36 yards away. Hit a 21 earlier. And Seibert will look to close in on the all-time leading score for FBS on all kickers. A good time in Norman from Bedlam. Hope you are as well, wherever you're watching. Cowboys keep waiting for Chuba Hubbard to break one. Not going to get the opportunity there. Check out today's Aflac game fact. And these guys are going so quick here. That's Hubbard, the ball carrier. The thing about Cornelius, they said even after that touchdown overtime, he just calmly hands the football to the official. Right. Like, that, that's what he's about. He is not flash. No, flash. no. Well, and, and he was a big deal, but uh, he didn't get highly recruited and came out and walked on here at Oklahoma State. You see a swing pass. But, you know, the thing is, four years ago, 2014, it was this young man, Taylor Cornelius, and Mason Rudolph. And they needed to make a decision as to who was going to play. And they, they told Taylor Cornelius he was going to start. He called home to his mom and dad said, I'm going to start. And then a couple days later, they made the decision to go with Mason Rudolph. And he's had to wait four since that phone call, and now he's got this opportunity. And Rudolph started every single game except one over those three years. Hubbard has the first down yardage, but he's he's an interesting story. You love the size that he brings, and Mike Gundy could not say enough good things about his patience and sticking around. And he, he has all the right things to say himself in, in talking about the reasons he decided to say the culture, the atmosphere, the city, the fans. He said, I had no reason to leave. Here's Cornelius to throw across the middle into the shadows, and it falls incomplete. Dylan Stoner, the intended target. Back-to-back well, -back throws now from, from Taylor Cornelius. Just a little bit off. This one, it's thrown up. You see how much green grass there is in front of Dylan Stoner. And it looks like he may have come down with that grab. He's going to get his arm under the ball. Oh, the ball, the nose of the ball touches the ground there. Yeah, and then on the backside as well. 
Ryan Ernest had the call. Yeah, good job by this officiating crew so far today. Second and ten. Cornelius to Tyron Johnson has the first down yardage. You know, Cornelius, as we talked about earlier, he, he's got all the physical tools with the size, the athleticism. He's got mobility. He's got a big-time arm. But the one thing he's going to have to improve on, we've seen him really four of the last five throws, more consistency with his mechanics. long lever quarterbacks sometimes struggle with that consistency. 25 first down so far. And another completion, that time to Hubbard out of the backfield. So Cornelius' youth coach... And Pastor said, look, he seems lazy and lethargic, like he's not interested, but we'll give you that quote in a second. Here's Johnson on the receiving end. And the Cowboys go fast. He's not going to let you get that quote in. You're going to say something bad about him. He's not going to let you get it in. He's going he's to go fast. I hope you can read fast. We're good. <laughs> As Cornelius has time and lost it over the head of Johnson that time. Incomplete. So it was like poison? What does that mean? Yeah, it's like poison. You take it, you don't know it's poison grease, and the next thing you know, you're dead. First of all, it's not my quote, okay? Okay, that's his high school coach's yeah. quote. Yep. I'm not sure I understand what that means. I think he's sort of, he can lull you to sleep. He can put okay. you to sleep. He's not excitable. He's not running around. Hey, look at me. Look what I do. Let's talk about me. And then, so in, the end, in, the grass or in the end, the final score, his team has won. I think that's what he was going for. Let's be, not do that again next week. Hubbard for a few. Tyrese Lott makes the tackle. Here's what I know about yeah. Taylor Cornelius. He's taking his shot, right? You get one shot at this if you're playing as a fifth-year senior in this Bedlam game. You got one shot, and he's taking it. And he's firing the football. They're not all accurate, but... He's had enough so far to keep Oklahoma State in this football game, but another big third down and eight coming up here. J.D. King and Chuba Hubbard are both in there now. That's King trying to swing it to him, and he couldn't haul it in. Cornelius just off the mark there, and it's fourth down. It's an interesting decision there to throw the swing route to the back. He's had so much success throwing downfield. Even when the defensive backs for Oklahoma have been in position, they've gotten beat by Tylen Wallace. And in a third and eighth situation, a big play in the first half, I think I would have taken a shot again on Tyler Wallace. Here's Matt Amendola from 41. It's been in a bit of a slump Amendola has. He's missed four of his last five. And we got a timeout. Timeout. Oklahoma. Their first of the half. It'll be a media break. If you like that, you watch ESPN. If you want some points? <laughs> Welcome to ABC. There's Matt Amendola. Told you he missed four of his last five. No one was on him for the two misses last week. And a crazy windy afternoon at Baylor. Missed from 45 and from 47. Could have been the difference in the game. Here from 41 yards away. On the way. And no good. Missed it to the left. So Amendola's slump continues, and it remains a six-point game under five to play in the half. When you give the ball right back to Kyler Murray with plenty of time left in the first half, he's been on fire all season and is no different in the first part of this game. Take a look at the progression. We talk about his speed and all those things, but look at his mental capacity going through his reads and then an accurate ball thrown to a fullback on a, on a wheel route. Then extending plays. This play ends up being almost six seconds, and you give him that much time, he's going to find an open receiver. And when you do everything right, you have containment, and you have coverage downfield, you think you're in good shape. Nope, sorry. You just squeak out here for another 25, 30 yards. Almost impossible to defend. Murray in the offense. Take over the 23. Put throw to Miles Tease. He has swung around for a loss. Kenneth Edison Magruder on the stop. You know, the thing that stands out to me, too, is this offensive line and protection. I know a couple of those plays there, you saw a little bit of pressure, but we're talking about the number one sack defense in the country, and they've, they've done a good job so far up front giving Kyler Murray some protection. Yeah, we really haven't mentioned Todd Jordan Brailford, who comes into this game as one of the leading the Big 12 in sacks, but there hasn't been any pressure. Murray looking to get out of there. 
And you haven't mentioned Creed Humphrey either. We spent a lot of time talking about apparently the all-world center. I mean, they, they can't, people can't say enough good things about the, the center for Oklahoma, the man who makes that offensive line go. Well, really, the only one that matters is Lincoln Riley, and, and he had... He said he's got elite skills, elite talent. Yes. No, I, I think he's probably the most talented player on the roster. Yeah, and, I, and you were like, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, you, you mean more than your receiver or your quarterback? And he said he's got the prototypical size and build and skill set to play center. He thinks he's going to be a, a, an all-world talent. And here's a really friendly guy, too. Maybe off the field. C.B. Lamb can't haul that one in. He's got the mean streak this entire offensive line has. It's just a redshirt freshman, and, you know, at 335 pounds, the thing that I was really, you know, excited about for Lincoln Riley is that he calls all of the runs up front. That's not the job of Kyler Murray. That's the job of Creed Humphrey, and he does it really, really well. Three consecutive incompletions. Just we were saying all these great things about Kyler Murray. And we'll get our first punt on their first three and out of the day for the Sooners. Austin Seibert on the punt. He does everything to kick the game. Got it away. A little contact. He's held up at the end there. And Dylan Storner will just let it go out of bounds. Tonight on ABC, it's the ACC show with playoff implication. Steve Adazio starring on game day this morning. Here's Cornelius. Has good protection and is tipped. Knocked away. Kenneth Murray. They call him K-9. Able to knock it away with a hand. Yeah, nice play by Kent Murray. This is the second or third time they've tried to slip this ball behind the linebacker to Dylan Stoner. And Kenneth Murray, a smart football player, talking with Ruffin McNeil, and really likes his Mike linebacker to think like he does as a defensive coordinator. And he did a really nice job reading that. He's a team captain, and he's only a, a true sophomore. Very impressive young man. Here's Hubbard. Wrestled down by Murray. Look at a third down. Well, you know how difficult it is to be a, a captain as a true sophomore. That goes to show you how young this Oklahoma defense is and how starved they are for leadership. Third down and seven. Take a shot with Tyler Wallace. Top of the screen. Rushing four, got it out quick. Looked to hit Stoner for first down yardage, and instead, Buki Radley Hiles able to make the stop. A welcome addition back into that Oklahoma defense after missing last week's game. All right, Buki had a chance to intercept this and take it back for a touchdown. You mentioned he's looking right back into the sun there, but a golden opportunity for him to make a statement play defensively for Oklahoma, and he missed it. He dropped a pick six against TCU. Not that that was necessarily the same, but he's had some opportunities. This is Matt Hockett on the punt. Booting it to C.D. Lamb for the 17. Lamb's going the wrong way. And all of a sudden, We've had consecutive three and outs. <laughs> Two I think punts. Tired. <laughs> what in the world is going on? Bedlam. Welcome back to Bedlam 27-21 Oklahoma. Here's pregame with Kale Gundy, coach for the Oklahoma Sooners, working on ball security at all times. It really stood out on tape watching this week how high the, all these running backs carry the ball. So I asked our stats guys, uh, how are they in ball, uh, ball security? They've only lost one fumble all season long, and it came from the quarterback, Kyler Murray, not from any of the running backs or receivers. They do a great job with ball security. They practice their final period of practice every day is a ball security drill a circuit where they go through different stations. They really focus on emphasizing it here in Oklahoma. That is different. It's awesome. Look like a joust. There's Sermon on the ground. On first down and ten. Sticks. Two and a half to go. There are the brothers. Mike Gundy, who stays as quarterback in Oklahoma State. Kale said just about every single quarterback record here prior to Bob Stoops' arrival 
as the brothers had a little meeting on the field prior to the game. So everybody in Oklahoma, the state of Oklahoma loves this rivalry except for the Gundy family because they're torn. <laughs> it's a tough week for them. <laughs> Uh, speaking of family, we, we should make the point that uh, Mike Gundy actually did not travel with the team. All start. Offense number two. Five-yard penalty. First down. Mike Gundy was uh, backward. He did not travel with the team watching his son Gunner play in a playoff game last night for 10-0 Stillwater High School. Uh, they went to 11-0 last night with a 48-13 win. It's Stillwater's first playoff win in a decade. It's only a 45-minute drive. No big deal. Yes. You've got to be reminded that this is Gundy's job, right? Yeah, His yeah. family is back in Stillwater. And the next matchup, it's a different kind of family matchup. Up against Justice Hill's brother. Here's Kyler Murray taking off. First down yardage, and he'll scamper out at the 38-yard line. So just to clean this up, Stillwater will move on to play Booker T. Washington. They're led by Dax Hill. That's Justice's brother, who is a five-star mega recruit who is uh, committed to school in Michigan, I understand. Yeah, well, you know who uh, Mike Gunny's going to be rooting for. Not only is his son hit playing, but, you know, Justice Hill's brother didn't commit to Oklahoma State, right. so he's definitely rooting against him. Well, well Gunny says we don't get five-star guys here. <laughs> not even with Justice? That is right. I mean, how did he not swing that? Yeah, not even a legacy. Murray to throw. And complete to C.D. Lamb. Right at the sticks. To gain a 10. After that last three and out for Oklahoma offensively, Kyler Murray came off the field and Lincoln Riley talked to him for maybe four or five minutes. And they were just talking about, hey, what happened on that series? What do you like? What are you feeling out there? What are you seeing? And I, I fully expect them to get back on track here on this drive. 90 seconds to go in the half. Oklahoma State will get the football to start the second half. Every possession counts in this game. Kyler Murray knows that. Marquise Brown. Touchdown. 51 to the house. Well, much like Tylen Wallace has done two times in this game, you put Marquise Brown in the slot. He's matched up on a true freshman in Tanner McAllister, and that's just no contest there. Nothing but speed burners to the end zone. That wasn't even close. Defender had no chance. Cyber moves to the extra point, 34-21. Marquise Brown, they call him Jet. Our pal Gus called him Hollywood, and that got a lot of attention. He's from Hollywood, Florida, not California. And for all the talk about Kyler Murray that, and all the touchdowns, that's his first touchdown pass today. Yeah, and he's come into this game with eight consecutive games of three touchdowns or more. And Marquise Brown has been a little bit quiet uh, in the last couple of games. Last week only had five catches. And uh, he's been a little bit nicked up and, and injured. And it's good to see him at full speed again on that route. Tomorrow, start your day off with NFL Countdown. Go one-on-one -on -one with Aaron Donald. Shares his secrets to sack in the quarterback. Then for Veterans Day, we've got the Cadets of Army squaring off against Coach K's fourth-ranked Blue Devils. Coverage tips at 1 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Everybody's talking about that Duke victory in their opener at Blue Out, Kentucky. Zion Williamson, everybody can't wait to watch him slam the basketball. It is college hoop season. Good thing you didn't play against Aaron Donald. He would have destroyed you. He, <laughs> he would have everybody. He would have more so than the basketball squad. Yeah, it seems like they've taken a little break. Here we go. Minute 24 to go in the half. It's to the Hubbard on the ground. Mark Jackson made the stop. Cowboys have just one timeout. Remember, they had to spend the first two timeouts to avoid delay game penalties. Here's a flag down as Cornelius throws, and it's dropped by Dylan Stoner. Usually sure-handed sophomore from Tulsa. That ball is a little bit thrown, a little bit behind Dylan Stoner. Offside, defense number 18, five-yard penalty, replay second down. Plenty of time here for Oklahoma State. Correction, that results in a first down.
plenty of time here for Oklahoma State. Right? There's a minute left in this half. They need some points here. This game is at risk of getting out of control if they put points on the board before halftime. Here's Cornelius. Has some running ability. Doesn't do it there. Tyler Wallace took a pretty good shot. It's a first down. Well, this is plenty of time considering they scored touchdowns in a minute 17. Three and a half minutes and 33 seconds. It's another scoring drive for them. So they have shown the quick strike ability. Here's Cornelius. See if that's a catch. It's Johnson on the sideline. Has it for the first down. Yeah, and this Oklahoma defensive front not getting any pressure on, on Cornelius. And after you get three or four plays into a two-minute drive, that defensive line starts to get gassed. That's a terrific catch. Cornelius drops one in there. Able to hit Stoner. I think about taking the time out here, save that time. If you're going to take three, four shots to the end zone here, put it on the ground. It's Hubbard. You said they had plenty of time. We're not able to have any answer for Texas offensively, and that was way too easy. And right now, Oklahoma has what they have on defense. They're not getting pressure, and, and they're not covering well on the back end, and this is what you get. Here's Trey Brown. Let's see what he gets. Just out to the 20-yard line. A flag comes in late. 25 seconds left in the half. Check the marker. See if it's the old block in the back. During the return. Illegal block below the waist, return team number two. Correction, illegal block below the waist, kicking team number two. 15-yard penalty be added to the end of the run, first down. Mike Cudley said in his 14 years he has not seen these kinds of penalties. With the chop block penalties <laughs> four times in the last full game said he hadn't had that in his last 10 years it's like Tanner McAllister the freshman you can't go down like that I mean he's got a big guy coming out that's a fullback and he just goes low and in the open field in the kicking game you can't do that their team can't go low it's just too much risk with knee injuries it's a good call all about the player safety and we'll see if he takes a seat. He's saying you can't the submarine sideline. there, right? See how Oklahoma tries to play this. Kennedy Brooks, conservative for them. They do have two timeouts, and they will spend one. Stay tuned for the Capital One Halftime Report. From Kevin Nagandi, Mac Brown, Jonathan Vilma. Talk about this one. They'll have plenty of highlights to show. This crowd, they, they, they want Lincoln Riley to keep his foot on the gas pedal. They, they were happy with the defense, the way they gave up that, that quick drive for Oklahoma State, and they want, they want to see Kyler Murray out in an open field. The adjustments at halftime will be big. What does Ruffin McNeil do to protect his secondary and get some more pressure? Does he stop playing soft against Taylor Cornelius and start to bring more pressure? And then for Oklahoma State defensively, we haven't said Jordan Brailford's name all game. He hasn't gotten any pressure on, on Kyler Murray, and I think they have to do the same. A little bit more pressure from both defenses in the second half. Oklahoma State came in leading the country in sacks. They've been stymied a bit by this awesome offensive line for Oklahoma in that regard but Ruffin McNeil and all the coaches they're on their way down to the locker room to make those adjustments that's kind of interesting people forget you know they have to make their way down before halftime I miss some of the action on the field on their way down some of these stadiums it's not so easy to get down to the locker room 20 seconds left in the half Six-point lead for sixth-ranked Oklahoma. Completing the Marquise Brown. As uh, going to say, it's incomplete now with 15 seconds left. Colby Peel had the defense. So Oklahoma is thinking about the playoffs, Greece, and Oklahoma State is wondering where that sixth win is going to come from. It's still got a tough, you know, beyond this game, tough schedule the rest of the way. And they're trying to become bowl eligible for the 13th consecutive season. 
but they got West Virginia at home and at TCU. There are no guarantees, and they're obviously in a, a huge uh, fight, big underdog, three touchdown underdog here today. Third and six. Murray to throw across the middle. Finding his way in the seam is Nick Basquin. Able to make the grab on a timeout. Looks like oh, they're going to clock. Yep. clock him. The first down stops the clock and put this on the ground. That'll allow him to keep that timeout. But I think they're, that's, it's, it's close here. Five seconds. You can't really run a play and trust that you're going to get the clock stop with the timeout in time. I think you've got to attempt a field goal here. It's normally the cutoff, six seconds, but Lincoln Riley's going to roll the dice. They would need to get to the 34 for Seibert if they can. Career long for him is 51. And it's Kyler Murray. It's, it's too, too much time. It's, you, can't, you can't run more than you know five yards, and the, the clock's going to run out. And I think Lincoln Riley was telling Kyler Murray, listen, don't, don't run around. you got to get down so I can call the timeout, and that's just a, a missed opportunity. Okay. I should point out we are ahead of last year's pace when they had the highest scoring edition of Bedlam. Oklahoma winning 62 to 52 last week. And the Cowboys will get the football and they will start at the 25. Steve Lieber with Brian Greasy. You'll hear the state. And this is just who Oklahoma is. They're going to have to outscore people to win. Average nine and a half yards combined. Every snap in that first half. Knocked away and a flag comes out. And that's how we open up quarter number three. Trey Brown had an opportunity for an interception there. He jumped the slant route. Ball was thrown a little bit low. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense number 72. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Wouldn't have mattered. Bledsoe. Junior from Lawrence. And the penalties continue to be a story, although much less than they were a week ago. Lincoln Riley came out in his press conference and said it was a great win. It was bad football going right into all the penalties. That was the first thing he addressed in the locker room. After, after a game. win, after yeah. a big win. That's how much it's on his mind. Cornelius in some trouble. Able to escape. It's batted away and hits the turf. Ronnie Perkins got a hand on it. Boy, and Taylor Cornelius is lucky that, that that ball was deflected because if it wasn't, he was throwing it right to an Oklahoma defender. Take a look. Makes a great play to spin out, but he's trying to throw this ball, and that would have gone straight to Oklahoma. A break for Cornelius. Trey Brown would have had another opportunity for interception. Second down and ten. to Hubbard. Won't get back to the line of scrimmage. Knocked backwards by Kenneth Mann. Right off the bat here, Steve, in the second half, this first drive, you see a little bit of a different approach from Ruffin McNeil. They're not having two safeties back. They're bringing the safety, Buki Radley Hiles, up around the line of scrimmage, trying to get more pressure on Taylor Cornelius. Now in a third long situation, you're going to keep these two safeties back here, and you're going to roll them over the top to protect the corners. Underneath, able to complete to Hubbard. Well short of the first down. Jordan Parker made sure of that, and it's fourth down. And and we hear so much about those halftime adjustments. Maybe a snapshot of that there. Well, in that time, I thought he would play too deep and protect those corners, but Ruffin decided to play it more aggressive and played a deep safety and man-to-man -man underneath, and a great job by Jordan Parker. We're going to give up the, the completion, just get the guy on the ground before he gets the first down and they force a punt. <laughs> Matt Hockett is back. CeeDee Lamb is set to return. Hockett is the backup punter. Siner had a 50-yard punt, but a 64-yard return by C.D. Lamb. Now that's fair catch at the 10. Three-point, sorry, three touchdown underdogs coming into this one. 
on first down. Here's Trey Sermon, started the game with a 60-yard run. Puts his foot in the turf and making people miss Justin Phillips. Able to finally bring him down. The other thing about that game four years ago, Greece, the Cowboys were five and six going into Bedlam, so they needed that game to win to get bowl eligible. And they finished seven and six. But I had two big, a big bowl before that, a big bowl after that. So Mike Gundy has proven over the years. It might take one season to step back, but they're right back in the picture the next. And just the week before that game was when they made the switch to Mason Rudolph, and that was his first win as a Cowboy. Sermon's over 100 yards rushing. They'll add to that. Kenneth and Edison Magruder made the stop. Well, we talked about the adjustments for Ruffin McNeil and Oklahoma defensively, being a little bit more aggressive, playing more man-to-man -man coverage. I think the same thing could be said for Oklahoma State defensively. They need to get off blocks. They have been killed in the run game. They need an extra man in the box, the safety down in, in Magruder, and these defensive linemen need to shed blocks. Easier said than done versus one of the best offensive lines in the country. All sorts of time for Murray. CeeDee Lamb hauled it in. They're going to say no, he's out of bounds. Last point of the scoreboard. Let's take a look. Yeah, that left foot was down. Clearly, he had possession, even though it was in one hand. He clearly had possession and a foot down. And C.D. Lamb's one of the best wide receivers in the country, in my opinion, with his body. The question, did that right foot come out? It didn't look like it. I think that was a good catch. But he's got great body control, Steve. We're going to take a look. The ruling on the field of an incomplete pass is under further review. Big difference in yardage on their own 31. Or will they be at the plus 38? Find out when we come back. After review, the receiver got his left foot down inbounds with possession. It is a completed pass. First down for Oklahoma at the 38-yard line. Yeah, it is. He's had that one all the way. 30-yard gain. What a catch by C.D. Lamb, who flips the field all by himself. What a play. Yeah, great job along the sideline. Great awareness, great body control. It's good to see C.D. Lamb get back involved in this football game. Pressure up the middle. Murray doing the dance. And unable to complete it. Tried to hit Sermon coming out of the backfield to bail him out. Couldn't get it to him. They were trying to get a slip screen to C.D. Lamb there. We mentioned C.D. Lamb a week ago. He had two personal fouls. He had an unsportsmanlike and a personal foul penalty on the same play at the end of the week, at the end of that Texas Tech game. And we asked Lincoln Riley about it uh, because clearly it was a meltdown on the part of C.D. Lamb. And he said, you know, if you knew the kid, you knew that that's not C.D. Lamb. That is not how he plays football. He is a disciplined football player. And uh, it's good to see him back involved in this Ineligible game. player downfield, offense number 72. The ball was thrown beyond the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty, replay second down. It's Ben Powers. Because they were throwing a slip screen, right, the offensive line is going downfield to get a block. And, and so you got to know as a quarterback, when, when your screen is Correction, not there, you got to throw it in down. the ground behind the line of scrimmage to avoid the penalty. What I liked was Lamb's reaction. He said, that's all on me for the penalties last week. For the rest of my time here, you will never see that again. And Lincoln Riley was just blown away, so that's totally out of character for that kid. Still trying to sort them, some things out. Oklahoma State has chosen to decline the foul. Brings up second down. <laughs> you know what? That's not I'd a rather. bad strategy. Not a bad strategy because you know, this is such an explosive offense, right, Ty? Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing. I would rather second down and 10 than first and 15. <laughs> Don't give them another shot. Yeah. Man, why give them one more offense? Well, they're, they're, they're averaging over 10 yards a yes. play in the game. Second and 10. Ready to go back to work. The Oklahoma State 38. Murray in some trouble. 
We get credit for the sack as Murray just takes a seat. It's a great job, great design. Edison McGruder, he's number three right here. He's going to come. He's got containment. Once he sees that it's a pass from the pocket, now he can come with pressure, and he had to come cautiously. I'll see how cautious he was in case Murray tried to escape, but he finally got him on the ground. First sack of the day for Oklahoma State. They came in number one in the nation. Oklahoma's been excellent protecting their quarterback. He'd only been sacked ten times all season. Some of that's on the offensive line. Of course, some of that's on his escapability. He's a hard man to bring down when you catch him. Here's Sermon. For five, Rodriguez. And Kevin Henry. They make stops together. Yeah, really nice job there. I mean, a decision to make here for Lincoln Riley. It's too long for a field goal attempt. It'd be about 55 or 56 yards. So he's going to go for it here. I get it, but if I were him, I still would punt this football and at least give your defense uh, as much field as you possibly can. That's the weakness of your team. So on a fourth down and 12. On the plus 40. Here's Murray throwing. And nowhere near his intended target, Miles Tease. And they do turn it over on him downs. And so the Cowboys trailing by six. We'll take over with excellent field position. Yeah, and we'll see what happens whether Oklahoma State is able to take advantage. But a, a great stop for that Oklahoma State defense. Exactly what you needed to do to get a stop coming out of the locker room at halftime and get good field position B against number two Clemson. Best starting field position for Oklahoma State in the game from their own 40. Cornelius to throw and complete to Dylan Stoner. Has the first down. It seems every catch Stoner makes is one which they move the sticks for. Let's take a look at this Oklahoma defense. Let's watch these safeties back here. Radley, Hiles, and Barnes. They've been rocking and rolling. One comes up, one goes back. When you do that, you're going to have free access on the outside for Cornelius. Cornelius is able to complete again. That time to Tyron Johnson. He starts to spread the wealth. Another first down. And what I mean by free access, right, is when that safety comes down, the corner has to be soft, right? He has to be, uh, defend that deep third. And so all the underneath routes to the wide receivers will be there. Ruling on the field of a completed pass is under further review. Let's take another look at that. The umpire blocking your view on, on that replay, Michael Cooper. Certainly, Tough to tell. Yeah, certainly didn't look like a clean catch right off the bat. The question was, did the ball touch the ground and help him to catch the football? But from those two looks, nothing conclusive. You know, Mike Gundy says we don't get five-star guys here. Tyron Johnson's a five-star player. <laughs> Went to LSU. <laughs> Wanted some more opportunities to catch footballs. Richard Jr. from New Orleans. Well, there was a lot of questions as to you know, who would step up for Oklahoma State from the receiver position. Obviously, they lost a ton with James Washington and Marcel Aitman. And then J.J. McCleskey, remember, he left after four games, felt like he wasn't getting the ball enough. And really, Tylen Wallace has taken over that role as the primary receiver for this offense. After review, the ruling on the field stands as called. And Tyron Johnson has been that secondary guy yes. that, that has come along. And Dylan Stoner really has taken over from McCleskey in that slot position. McCleskey played the four games. That's the magic number. Now it is current college football landscape. And he will look to go elsewhere. Play football elsewhere next season. First down and 10. At the Oklahoma 40. Here's Hubbard. Inching closer to another first down. It's an impressive Cowboys drive here. Well, that, that's a great first down run there. You almost gain 10, get another first down. It's like you're give them nine. But if Oklahoma State can run the football here in the second half, it'd be really dangerous. Cornelius on the move. Directing traffic and throwing. Had a man come open. Couldn't put enough air underneath it for Wallace to catch up to it. Yeah, there's a lot of backyard ball going on right now. Kyler Murray extending plays, and now Cornelius extending plays, and Wallace just tried to separate off of a broken route. 
And if Cornelius would have held it a little bit longer, it would have been a touchdown. Safety. Buki Hiles coming down here. That's what gives you so much room out here to throw the football if you want it. Trying to run for it with Hubbard. We'll see where they mark the forward progress. It'll be very close. Kenneth Mann and Kenneth Murray coming up big for Oklahoma. They gave it to him, I think. Yep. They're moving the chains. That looked very close. But they gave him the forward progress. They're not even going to take another look at it. Oklahoma State quickly snaps the football. Cornelius throwing and a grab. <laughs> Dylan Stoner goes up to make the catch. Wow. Cornelius was under tremendous amount of pressure, and he almost threw this just hoping that something good would happen. Stoner was double covered in the middle of the field and made an unbelievable catch. 18 yards on that last play. Cornelius is feeling it right now. He started out hot, too. We had touchdowns on five of our first six possessions. The only one that wasn't a touchdown was a field goal. On the ground, Chuba Hubbard trying to spin away. Good second effort. Kenneth Murray makes another stop. Hubbard is an interesting story. I mentioned he's from outside of Edmonton. They looked at his tape and they saw him running away from guys. And, you know, the field's bigger in Canada and everything's different. The dimensions. And he comes over here and all these Texas high school tough guys are going up against him. And Hubbard was able to answer the bell. Took a big pop, jumped up right away. Coaching staff telling us he's the legit tough guy as well. He just can't skate. He said skating was an issue, so he went to football. When you run that fast, you don't need to skate. Second and six. From a seven. It's Hubbard again. Trying to turn the corner, and he's lassoed down. See where they mark him out. He could get a first down at the one. It is Buki Radley Hiles who made the stop. You see the speed here of Hubbard, a 10 4, 100 meter guy. He runs right around the edge of the defense and almost gets another first down, brings up a third and short here. This will be interesting because Oklahoma State has not been very good this season. Run the ball in short yarded situations between the tackles. We'll see if they take this ball to the edge as well. It's Hubbard. Good second effort, and he's in for the score. Converted quarterback. The wrong coach's kids. <laughs> Matt Amendola. There's a heck of a quarterback, no question. So here we go. Oklahoma trailing by a point. Seven and a half to go in the third. Well, if Oklahoma State is going to keep this lead, they're going to have to figure out this offensive line and this run game for Oklahoma. Take a look. Some of the plays that these big guys coming up are, are setting up. Samaya, Ford. This is Bobby Evans, Poland. Look at the look at how everybody's covered up. Ben Powers, that play could not have been better blocked. You get Trey Sermon and Kennedy Brooks to the second level, and then they're going to make you pay. And you add in Creed Humphrey at the center position. I think this is one of the best, if not the best, offensive line in college football. And Oklahoma State is going to have to continue to get that sixth and seventh man in the box to stop the run game. On the ground with Trey Sermon, able to squeeze through a the hole. There is a penalty marker down. Just to say those nice things about the offensive line. Let's see if it's coming back for holding. <laughs> we'll check. Holding offense, number 71. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. That is Bobby Evans. And again, the offensive line coach, he's the co-offensive coordinator, is Bill Biedenboe. Apparently, we mispronounced his name about a thousand times last week. And so we want to clean that up and apologize to his entire family. Uh, good news for Bill, by the way. Uh, this past Wednesday, named a Broyles nominee. Yeah, as he should be. Well-deserved for the uh, assistant coach of the year in college football. Just as a semifinalist. Yep, and uh, for all the talk about Lincoln Riley, you know, to the NFL one day, and they say the same things about Coach Biedenboe as well. The NFL might be looking at him. Right now, all eyes on Bedlam. 
And Kyler Murray. And it shows you some of the arm strength. They'll throw it away there. This game feels like it's taken a big turn all of a sudden. In favor of the Cowboys. Well, I, you know, I think, I think you kind of knew when you get a stop on defense, either one of these teams, that the other offense, they're going to score. It's just a question of whether it's a, a touchdown or a field goal. And I think Lincoln Riley knows, he knew coming in this was going to be a dogfight. It's going to be a fourth quarter game. And that's just the way it's been for Oklahoma, especially last week and again this week. Sermon on the ground. First five possessions for Oklahoma. They were able to manage 27 points. The last four possessions, a total of seven points. And credit to that Oklahoma State defense as well. You're seeing Oklahoma State defensively move around a little bit more. That time, a nice rush from Jordan Brailford. Calvin Bundage with a wrap around the edge. Gets a tackle for loss. Here's third and 21. Murray trying to escape from Justin Phillips. And I throw that one away. The Cowboys defense holds off the punt. Back-to-back -back stops for Oklahoma State defensively. And you got to give credit to, to Jim Knowles, their defensive coordinator, who's a first-time uh, defensive coordinator here for Oklahoma State in his first year. He came from Duke, where he was the defensive coordinator for eight seasons. Uh, and he's got a, a much different approach defensively. Does a lot on the defensive side, a lot of different looks, and, and he's brought more pressure here in the second half, and it's helped him. There's a look at Austin Seibert. One of three players does all the kicking for his respective team. Kickoffs, field goals, punting. And Dylan Stoner from the 42. Headed the wrong way, and he will be dropped at the 40-yard line. You don't get that full size very often anymore. That's the lottery. You gonna be here a while? We're having a good time. Tyron Johnson, what a play to get the first down. Leaping over Trey Brown. Gain of 12. You gotta be courageous and try this for obvious reasons. I don't get it. What do you mean? <laughs> First down of ten there across midfield. Good protection for Cornelius. All sorts of time down the sideline. When Johnson was looking for a flag, Brown was with him step for step. Now, we've, we've seen Trey Brown get beat quite a bit already in this game, but a great job here on the double. Watch him. He doesn't react to the double move. He stays in phase with Johnson. That's as good as you can do it. And when Oklahoma and these corners do it well, you got to point that out, too, because they've been beat a lot. But that's really well done from Trey Brown. Brown, the fastest player on the field for that Oklahoma defense. Showed some of that speed there. Cornelius, dangerous throw. Able to get it to Landon Wolf, who lowers his shoulder. We'll see where they spot him. Maybe just short of the first down. You see the unofficial yellow line for the first down marker. Both these sets of wide receivers on both sides are, are blocking tonight. They are not just catching the ball. We've seen C.D. Lamb blocking on touchdown runs by Kennedy Brooks, and that time Tyron Johnson gets a, a big block on Trey Brown, which allows them to almost get a first down, but that's what Mike Gundy wants from his wide receiving crew. James Washington and Aitman were great at it a year ago, and uh, this crew's taking over for them. They've had great wide receivers. They're the only school with three Bolitnikoff awards. Justin Blackman got it twice. James Washington once. Dez was a finalist. And Tyler Wallace is on that Bolitnikoff watch list right now. A couple no. of chain links. He's playing the big games, not no, no. against the bad teams. Third down and one. Cornelius on the quarterback keeper. Don't know why we don't see that more often. And they get the first down. Boy, and that got this offensive line fired up. We haven't talked anything about this Oklahoma State offensive line, but Marcus Keyes is their leader up front. Started 33 games for them, and at 310 pounds, they ran right behind him. He was a first-team All-Big 12 guard last year in the Big, Big 12. Cornelius was under center for that snap, too. Earlier this season, the game against Texas, people were wild. They ran out of the eye. It's something they haven't seen a lot in Stillwater. Off the play fake. On 
the pressure. And it skips him to Wallace. And it will go incomplete. Cornelius moves better grease than a guy who's 6'6", 232. Yeah, no, he's, he's got a long stride. He's not as quick. You know, his movement in the pocket is not as sudden. But once he gets going, we haven't really seen much of that in this game tonight. He hasn't been keeping the ball on, on those zone reads. Maybe they're saving that for the fourth quarter. But when he gets ahead of steam, he's, he's hard to get down. Second down and ten. Coming up on five minutes to play third quarter. Number six in a ball game. Hubbard. We'll get sent back to the line of scrimmage. Looking forward progress for a couple. Kenneth Murray making the stop. It was when all the questions were being raised about the defense and Mike Stoops was let go and the move to Ruff and McNeil that Kenneth Murray said the brotherhood of that Oklahoma defense is at an all-time high. Trying to keep this unit together. They need a big play here. Third down and eight. This is the time where Curtis Bolton, the linebacker, number 18, who's one of their better pass rushers. Here he is right here. They love to bring him in rush situations. Here he comes. A oh, great call. Breeze right on it. It's Curtis Bolton to the rescue for the Sooners. Bolton's second sack comes in a perfect spot. Yeah, that, that's his fifth sack on the season. There he is right here. They just like to move him around. He's got a unique, quirky ability to rush the passer as a linebacker. He's only 218 pounds, but he's slippery. That time, they didn't even block him. And an easy tackle for loss. I mean, Marcus Keyes just moves right to the right, almost allowing Bolton a free path. Fourth down and 12. We'll punt it away. Hockett from about the 47. See if he can pin him down deep. CeeDee Lamb, the fair catch at the seven-yard line. Well, not only did that not allow them to get the first down, but maybe more importantly, they took him out of field goal range. The big sack from both. All smiles for now. Oklahoma with the football, pinned back deep in their own territory. It's Kennedy Brooks, breathing room and then some, out to the 28-yard line. How do you like me on first down? Perfect. You think you get Oklahoma State and you get them backed up inside the 10-yard line, they just run this counter, they pull around Cody Ford, the big fella gets to the second level, and Kennedy Brooks, you know, that's, everybody knows what play's coming. It's not like it's a secret of what Oklahoma's going to do running the football, but it's just very difficult to stop with such a good offensive line. 20 yards there. You can see he's averaging better than 10 yards per carry. Reminds me of Trey Sermon, the first offensive snap of the game. Ripped off 60 yards on the right side. So it's some breathing room. Kyler Murray will air it out. Marquise Brown goes up to get it for a minimal gain. A.J. Green on the coverage for Oklahoma State. I mean, you tell me what you're going to do as a defensive coordinator against, against this offense when you have such a physical run game and then you have a quarterback and speed at the receiver position with Marquise Brown and C.D. Lamb and, and they can throw the football and Jim Knowles knows the third piece of this offense that really stings you is when the off-schedule plays with Kyler Murray. Those three things are the reason that Oklahoma's offense is so difficult to stop. Averaging 49.1 points per game. They live above 50, though. Murray in trouble. He'll be taken down at the 25-yard line. Kenneth Edison McGruder has quietly had an excellent game for the Cowboys. Able to bring him down. Great job on the second level. Look at the coverage. Murray wants to throw to the right. Right now, he wants to throw it. There's nowhere to go. We got a, a linebacker over the top, and that's what gives... Magruder the opportunity to get the sack. Great coverage downfield from Oklahoma State. Second sack of the game for Edison Magruder, the senior from Houston, Texas. Already got 10 tackles. We haven't started the fourth quarter. Second and six. Murray in some chaos. Able to get it out to Brown. Scamper out of bounds there. Marquise 
Marquise Brown, slippery for 25. Yeah, and Rodarius Williams there, number eight, the corner. That's who needs to make this tackle. This is the fourth or fifth time that Marquise Brown has caught this little shallow cross. And there comes Williams. He, he overplays it and gives up an extra 20 yards. Green and Williams, and neither one can come up with the play. Just across midfield. Murray will keep it. And he'll run out for a couple. Jarrell Owens forced him out. Todd. Hey, Greasy, I, I want you to watch this one more time and tell me what, what you would do if you were in this position. It was an unbelievable cut. Marquise Brown, I mean, he was dead to rights. And to make that move with the two guys converging on him, he's a special talent. I don't put myself in that position, Todd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I throw the ball to him. <laughs> or run out of bounds. Here's Murray to throw. Lost one, and it's caught. It's Marquise Brown. And the Cowboys are hanging out for dear life. Jay Green got a cleat, and that's all. Gain of 39. Todd talked about his route running, and it's just a double move on the outside. A.J. Green bites. The ball's a little bit underthrown, but Marquise Brown comes back and makes a nice play. Low snap. Murray able to keep it. And then get off to Kennedy Brooks. Good play by Murray to handle that snap. The final 20 seconds of the third quarter. Let's see if they want one more play here. Five seconds. On second and goal from the five. Zero's on the clock. They're going to let him play it. And the touchdown. Kennedy Brooks for the score. And Oklahoma back on top. Clearly there were zeros on the scoreboard before the snap. Take a look at the clock. And remember how that how that works is the back judge is looking at the at the clock. And he'll look up at the clock when it hits zero. When it hits zero, his eyes will come back down to the snap of the ball. So there's a little bit of an echo there on the zeros. You love the echo. You the echo of the whistle. And so that's how the third quarter will come to an end. We're over 1,000 yards in total offense. 76 points on the scoreboard. 41-35, and I don't believe that'll be the final score either. We'll be back after this message from your local ABC station. More Bedlam, fourth quarter on the way. Mascot, yeah, you told us all right. <laughs> Tell the truth. Freesey got him right away. Purdue and Georgia Tech. They got the rambling wreck and the Boilermaker special. After you for five. Great ride here. All right, we open up quarter number four. Sixth rank Oklahoma with a six point lead. And the Cowboys come out throwing and completing to Chuba Hubbard, who's been excellent. All purpose yards, he does it all. Had 111 all purpose yards in the game against Texas. And he's been a factor in the backfield there. All right, he's, he's just such a great threat out of the backfield. Catching the ball and then running it, he's been effective too. I think you see who's the heir apparent to Justice Hills. Obviously, Chuba Hubbard. And now Taylor Cornelius starting to push 400 yards passing in this football game. met him on time nice job by Motley coming back and making a play on the football even though you know you're beaten with the route don't give up on it come back and make a play and that's good to see Parnell Motley who at the end of last week's game gave up a big touchdown had some penalties go against him as well that's the first time I called his name all game here today imagine defensive back not having his name called in this kind of game Second down and ten. On the ground, it's Hubbard. One or two. Kenneth Murray made the stop. Hubbard has carried the ball 14 times for 57 yards. Made four catches for 30 yards. And has been involved in the return game as well. He's up a big third down here. The place is starting to bounce a little bit. As night rolls in. 
there's no one in Oklahoma. And this defensive line gets some pressure. Third and nine, here they come, trying to set up the screen to Hubbard. Has first down yardage and more. Chuba Hubbard perfectly set up. Good job by the offensive line getting the blockers out in front. The screen is perfect. Well, not only the offensive line, but that Tylen Wallace at the receiver position. Watch as this screen develops. We'll see him come from the outside. He's on the right side. The ball is complete, and here comes Wallace right there. Gets the block to seal the first down for Hubbard. It's a 19 yard gain. 400 yards passing now for Cornelius. Exactly. Looked like Oklahoma had a player down. Jordan Parker. Both teams went to the sideline, and now officials saying calling them back out as Parker got up and walked off the field. Reset the play clock, and let's go. That was first down, number 51. We're a minute and 15 into the fourth quarter. Cornelius has all sorts of time to throw and able to complete. It's Tyron Johnson, another first down, make it 52. I, I don't know what the right number is for first downs, but it's not 52 in the first couple minutes of the fourth quarter. These two don't care about first downs, they care about points. Issues with the snap. Cornelius. On the run, throwing and completing. Tyler Wallace for another first down and they're in the red zone. I can't tell you how hard that is. When you don't get the ball, you have to look down to get the football and then to see the, the coverage. And they go fast. That's Wallace on the outside. And they're inside the 10. Mike Yurcich is really ramping up the tempo. What do you see when this ball goes down? Now the quarterback, you don't know what's happening. Is the rush coming? Where do my receivers go? What's the coverage? Now you're just playing backyard ball, and he buys a little time and gets the ball to Wallace for yet another first down. The snap from Johnny Wilson was just fine. It was Cornelius who dropped the football there. Second down and four. Another first down. L.D. Brown, his first carry of the game and 11th of the season. Richard Sophomore from Dallas checks in. I don't think we've had, Steve, a turnover in this football game. And neither one of these defenses has really uh, challenged. It's an interception, a fumble. Uh, neither one of them uh, have got many turnovers on the season. Oklahoma only has seven coming into this game. And that's 123rd out of 130 teams in college football. They desperately need a turnover. First down and goal. Cornelius will throw back to the end zone. And it's knocked away. Looking to go to Tyler Wallace. And it was Motley there with the excellent coverage. This is the matchup that Oklahoma State wanted. Wallace on Motley, and Motley just gets enough there, gets that hand up. It's a good no call by the official. Both the offensive player and defensive player were pushing off and give credit to Motley. Motley was so upset with his play a week ago, and the coaching staff had to remind him, hey, we won the football game. We won. They try to just move on to the next play. Here is the next play. Second down and goal. Three to snap it. They get it away. It's Hubbard able to slice through for the score. That's Hubbard's third touchdown of the afternoon. Here's Matt Amendola. Oh! And he missed the extra point. There is no lead change. It's 41 all. Wow. Matt Amendola had been 42 of 43 on the season in extra points. And he misses this one. His slump continues in a big way. 41 all. Let's go back and look at the two misses from Matt Amendola. This was a field goal earlier in the game. He hooked it. And then take a look at the hold here. He doesn't spin the, the laces out, Steve. As a holder, you got to get that ball down and spin the ball so the laces are facing away from the kicker's foot. And that time, Matt Hockett, the backup punter, the redshirt senior, didn't spin the ball. It may have affected that extra point. Most of America is saying Ray Finkel wants the laces out for Ace Ventura, but that'd be lost on you, Greece. Here's Trey 
Brown. Nothing doing. Amendola is now 117 for 120 career extra points. That Barry knows what I'm talking about. All right, here we go. The missed extra point leaves us tied at 41 all. Still a ton of time left for Kennedy Brooks. And Oklahoma is out beyond the 30, gain of 18. Puts Brooks over 100 for the game. Yep. Look at this. I mean, you got Kennedy Magruder, the, the safety coming down the opposite side for Oklahoma State. They, they can't afford to play six guys in the box in this fourth quarter and stop this run game. Murray throwing to Carson Meyer. He has the first down. And this is Magruder was trying to drag him for a few extra yards on his back. Shows you the strength of Carson Meyer. Let's just clean up that last extra point. Yes, by the way. I don't care if the, if the laces are in or out. That's the, the kicker's job to get it through the uprights. And right. it's an extra point for crying out loud. Right. But it's not the NFL extra point. Kyler Murray able to hang on to it. Did you see that at the mesh point? That was almost a whole lot of trouble at the mesh point. <laughs> I love those buzzwords. Yeah. Yeah. No tight end. Now you know what free access is. You're going to good there. Gain of 11. That was almost disastrous for Oklahoma. Murray keeping it at the end. So hang on. So that's on. You're putting it on the holder or you're not? I'm saying, I'm trying to tell you what is supposed to happen. The holder's got to spin it and the lace has got to be up, but the right. kicker has to make it no matter what. Got it. On the extra point. Kennedy Brooks taken down by Calvin Bundage. 11 minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. And, and both of these defenses are, are on their heels. And this is, this is going to be back and forth in this fourth quarter. I wouldn't be surprised if we, if we start pushing 60 points towards the end. The crowd is yelling. They want a face mask on Calvin Bundage. We'll see it from that look. We would agree with the crowd. Got away with it. Kennedy Brooks inside the 30. Stays on his feet. Brooks picks up a block. And he has just tripped up. There is a flag down. We'll check the marker. As Kennedy Brooks is on the 10-yard line. Gain of 26. Well, I think it's coming back. Holding offense number 74. 10-yard penalty. We play second down. We've had two penalties on left tackle Bobby Evans. This is the first one on Cody Ford. He's going to pull around to lead for Kennedy Brooks, and his job is to get the outside of that. And that's a, that's a poor call, a really, really bad call. And I get it. When a defender goes down on the ground and you're engaged as a lineman, that's all that the official sees. But that was not a holding call. And Mike Schwab, our director, with the excellent cutaway, immediately I'm thinking, show me Lincoln Riley, and Riley appears on your screen because you want to see the instant reaction, and Riley was just looking down at his call sheet. He is forever cool and calm. Second and 13. Under 10 and a half to play. Both Sermon and Brooks in the backfield. It has to be because they're the only healthy running backs Oklahoma has. Does a little dance and he's going to be spun around for a loss. Dropped in a big way. Eamon Ogbung Biniga able to make the stop. Amen on that. Great coverage downfield. Marquise Brown is who Kyler Murray wanted to get. You're going to see he's looking downfield. Marquise Brown ends up being double covered. Here he is. This is Marquise Brown, and you see both of these defenders. That was great coverage downfield. And then Amen gets in the backfield for the sack. Really, Amen? That's his name. That's his first name. Yeah. I'll do the first. You do the first names, I'll do the last names. Perfect. See how it works. Went from a, on Bonamiga. Went from a first down run to third and 21. And Murray is stopped by Cole Waltershine. Mark this in the course of this game. That phantom holding call on Cody Ford was, should not have been a holding call. Brooks was down to the 10-yard line, and Oklahoma was going in for another touchdown. And instead, they go backwards and now have to punt. So from first and 10. Now fourth and 24. Now the punt from Cyber. 
Called for fair catch and let it bounce, and it'll be down at the 22-yard line. Fourth, Cowboys put up 10 unanswered to upset number three Oklahoma. Yeah, and this is the, during the break. Lincoln Riley talking to the officials. He wanted that face mask call on Calvin Bundage, which I don't disagree with, and then the obvious phantom holding call on Cody Ford. But you know what? Oklahoma's not going to get the benefit of the doubt. They know that, and he's going over his defense saying, listen, this is us against the world. We're not going to get a call. We have got to dominate this last eight and a half minutes of this game to win. So here we go. A missed extra point would have given Oklahoma State the lead. First down and 10 from their own 23. Taylor Cornelius, the quick throw, able to complete. Tyron Johnson. If I'm Mike Gundy on the sideline after that break, I'm telling my quarterback, so listen, you keep doing exactly what you've been doing. Be patient, take what the defense gives you. Don't turn the football over. We can move the football on these guys. Cornelius to try the other side. That's Tyler Wallace, couldn't come up with it. Boy, Tyler Wallace has been so good in this game. He's been so good for Oklahoma State all season. And in the fourth quarter, with the game on the line, you got to make that play. He's been targeted 14 times tonight, Greece. Seven receptions. Johnson has nine catches on the night. Cornelius already a career high, 448 yards passing. Fifth year senior in his first year starting. Looking to make his mark in his opportunity, Todd. You know, we, we've seen issues in the secondary all season long for the Sooners. It's been interesting to watch tonight. There have been several times where Brennan Bradley Hiles, the freshman nickelback, and Parnell Motley, number 11, who's really struggled throughout this season, have been getting after each other, yelling and screaming about communication issues. It's something to keep an eye on as we get under eight minutes here in the fourth quarter. Third down and six. Looks like a man-to-man -man coverage underneath and two deep safeties. Cornelius gonna run for the first time has the first down and slides across midfield You get that 2D man under and Taylor Cornelius recognizes it and that's exactly what you want him to do Once that hole opens up in the defensive line. There's nobody left for the quarterback. That was a long slide They say he started his slide out at the 47. So not across midfield picked up nine on that play when we talked about his ability to run the football. He's got that ability in the run game, but in the fourth quarter, when the defense gets tired, when the quarterback begins to run and use his legs, it can be a real weapon. There's an injured player down. It's Neville Gallimore, the junior from Ontario. Will step out. Seven and a half to play. All tied. ESPN app. Neville Gallimore will sit out for a play. Dylan Famatu will replace him at the nose. We'll see for how long. Howard is blown backwards, and it is Famatu able to make the play. Welcome to the football game. Redshirt Jr. from Norwalk, California. And Gallimore goes right back in after lipping off the field the previous play. I might have left Famatu in there. Last time, Ruffy McNeil decided to play two deep man under in third down situations, and Cornelius beat him with his feet. We'll see if they decide to do the same thing here. Third and seven. Straight handoff up the middle of Hubbard, and he has it. And they keep pushing the pile. And that's the 60th first down, or maybe the most significant of the game to this point. Great job by the center, Johnny Wilson. Got a block coming off the line of scrimmage. Here he is, and he's going to get up to the second level. Great combo block on the on the linebacker, Murray. And when you're third and seven, and you can just turn around and hand the football off on the inside run and get a first down, you really know all things are clicking. Maybe they're tired to hear you praising that Oklahoma offensive yep. line. They want some love for that Cowboys offensive line led by Johnny Wilson. Last two first downs for Oklahoma State via the rush. Now the Sooners defense guessing. They'll keep it on the ground with Hubbard for five more. Down to the 35. The football comes out. Let's see. Oklahoma has it. It's Kenneth Murray. And that's the first turnover of this football game with 6.09 to play and tied at 41.
What a time for a turnover. You got two players still down on the field. There was a wild collision in the middle there. Hubbard got hit hard. We're going to have to go back and take a look if, if he was down before that football came out or whether it was an actual fumble. Again, the ruling on the field is important. They called it a fumble, but a huge play in the course of this game, obviously. Let's watch it again. That's Gallimore 90 back in the game after being shaken up. He's on the bottom of that pile. And Gallimore made the hit there. The ball clearly came out and was recovered immediately, immediately by Oklahoma. And Gallimore and Hubbard are the ones that are down. Bedlam continues. More after this. There and then he gets, he kind of gets, when Hubbard gets hit back, right, he gets bent back and, and then he's down on the ground. So just hope that's nothing serious. Now let's take a look at the knee and the ball. The knee of Hubbard, we'll circle it here when we get to the spot. Before his knee goes down, just before it goes down, like the ball came out. So there's the knee and here's the ball right here coming out. So I think that was the right call on the field, barely. Uh, but the right call and a huge swing in the first turnover of this football game. First down and 10. 6.09 to go in the fourth. Kyler Murray, quick pass to Marquise Brown down the sideline. He's got first down yardage and then he'll run out. Could add three or four more if he wanted. We're over 1,200 yards of total offense. Clock winning under six minutes left. This is typically the time of the game where Lincoln Riley likes to lean on that offensive line in the run game to take time off the clock and to wear out defenses. They did it last week against Texas Tech in the fourth quarter. Here's Kyler Murray. He'll be tripped up. Wound up going for a gain of about three. Walter shot able to get just enough of it. Everybody's got all three timeouts remaining. Then we've had just one turnover in the game. And that's how Oklahoma got the football in this possession. Kennedy Brooks stays on his feet. Another missed tackle for Oklahoma State. There is a flag down, and Kennedy Brooks will be down at about the two. We'll check the marker. 38 if it stands. Personal foul, hands to the face, defense number one. <laughs> Penalty will be half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. First down. Lincoln Riley approves. Yeah, maybe that conversation he had with the officials helped out. A missed tackle by Jordan Brailford. You're going to see him. He's right here. He needs to make the play in the hole on Kennedy Brooks. This would have been a no gain. He misses this tackle. And then Calvin Bundage gets caught with the hands to the face, and Oklahoma's in business inside the two. Kennedy Brooks, 14 carries, 165 yards. Let's see if they give it to him here. First down and goal. From inside the two, it is Brooks. Not going to get there. Back to the line of scrimmage. Second and goal. Clock will wide. We'll get under four minutes. 
Walt Rashad and Brailford making the tackles for Oklahoma State. And the way this football game has gone, you know, you almost wonder if Oklahoma doesn't want to take a little time off the clock before they score this touchdown. Cornelius will get his opportunity. He just wonders, wonders when. He waited a long time to start a football game. Another minute or two won't bother him. Trey Sermon is in the game now. They give it to Sermon, crashing into the end zone for the touchdown. Through Calvin Bundage, the game's only turnover leads to the go-ahead score. Sixth rank Sooners by six. Just like a week ago at Texas Tech to seal the game, Oklahoma does it with the punishing offensive line and ground game. Kennedy Brooks, the big run to get them down inside the five, and then Trey Sermon finishes the deal by running right over Calvin Bunge for the touchdown. You can talk all you want about the flash and Hollywood Brown and Kyler Murray running around throwing. This team is physical and nasty in the run game. That's what makes them different. Austin Seibert. Will set the kick the extra point. The Big 12 career leader in points. On the way. And it is good. Three and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Oklahoma by seven. Trey Sermon with the finishing touches. Lincoln Riley, your thoughts. We're back with more Bedlam after this. Welcome back to College Football on ABC, presented by Jared. Having a good old time here in Norman, especially now. A sigh of relief with the home team up by seven, with 329 to go. Some people had. Cowboys are three touchdowns under the Right in the game, about to get the football. It is Hubbard, who's back in the game after being banged up. And he's out to the 29-yard line. Time now for a look at our Pacific Life game summary. <laughs> Good luck getting that in. <laughs> How long is that going to take? Yeah, about six seconds. Let's go now. Uh, I don't know where you're going to choose, right? The two quarterbacks have been unbelievable. Taylor Cornelius, everybody talking about Kyler Murray coming into this game, and all he's done has been outstanding. Yeah. Two touchdowns over 450 yards. And then Kyler Murray's been Kyler Murray. That's what he's done all year. But now, right now, Taylor Cornelius has the stage, right? Can he hold serve? Got the uh, model pose there with the helmet over his shoulder. Fama Atu is back in the game, replacing Neville Gallimore. Hubbard, the ball carrier. Don't, don't, don't forget, too, this is a guy in Cornelius that waited four years to get this one shot at Bedlam. Great opportunity here with three minutes left. And you don't have to do anything extraordinary, Todd. Just continue to run the offense like he has been. Cornelius. Out to Wallace, and he's out of bounds. And this is unfamiliar territory for Oklahoma, Greece. Like, they're used to blowing the doors off people. They're not used to being in these tight games. Their average margin of victory is over 24 points. You know, it was the Army game in overtime. They wound up being close last week, but they're in a tough spot here. Trying to protect a seven-point lead against a very good offense. Wallace on the receiving end, working on Motley. The problem they have is these corners, Ruff and McNeil, doesn't trust them to get up and play tight coverage, so they have to play off. And right now, Oklahoma State is just doing exactly what they should be doing, throwing the ball short, underneath, and methodical, and you go right down the field. Caleb Kelly and Trey Norwood, some good defense there by the Sooners. Clock winds the two and a half to play. And honestly, if I'm Oklahoma State, Mike Gundy, I'm keeping my eye on the clock. I don't need to be in a rush, right? They've been so fast this game. You need to score, yes, but you also need to take time off the clock for Kyler Murray not to get back on the field. Have all three timeouts. Both teams do. Too deep again, man under. It's where the quarterback can use his legs. Two to snap it. Just get it away in time. It's Hubbard up the middle. It's Hubbard staying on his feet. 
Chuba Hubbard able to go through Curtis Bolton. This is just a cat and mouse game. If they're going to play off on the outside, he's going to throw it outside. If they play too deep, he's going to come underneath. Game of 20. It's Hubbard again. Running Hubbard up the middle has been their best play, their best offensive play. He's over 100 yards now. And honestly, if I'm, if I'm Lincoln Riley, I think about calling a timeout and giving my defense a little bit of a, of a break. I know you can, your offense doesn't need it as much right now as your defense does. But they're actually getting an opportunity to substitute here because Mike Bugundy did. That time out. He, he sensed there was some confusion. Guys are gassed. I think time that's a smart out. play. Oklahoma, their first of the half. It'll be 30 seconds in length. Game. Cornelius has the ball batted down. Looks like Amani Bledsoe might have gotten it. Steve, they brought L.D. Brown in the backfield, who hasn't played at all in this game, and they tried to sneak him on a wheel route behind Parnell Motley, but Motley wasn't falling for it. He had leverage, and there was nowhere for Cornelius to go to throw that ball to L.D. Brown. Well done by Motley. There is no foul for an ineligible player downfield. L.D. Brown, number seven, coming out, and see the tip pass there, and there's Motley in great position, nowhere to throw that football. Brings up a third and seven. And you think, obviously, four down territory, you don't have to get all of it. Man to man across the board. fourth down. Curtis Bolton blew that play up. It's a good throw here. Chuba, Chuba, Chuba Howard not able to bring it down, but I think Cornelius could have run for this first down, Steve. If not, at least bring up a short fourth down situation. When you see that right there as a quarterback, you have got to take it. And here's the ball game. Fourth and seven. Three timeouts. They want to think about it. Cornelius with the game in his hands. And the whistles blew. You couldn't hear it because of the crowd. There is a flag down. I think they had a false start on Oklahoma State. False start. Offense number 73. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Boy, and that helps Oklahoma State because there was nobody open and nowhere to go with that football. Here he is right here. Tevin Jenkins just gets a little bit of an early start. But you can see Oklahoma look like they stopped rushing there. They heard the whistle. That's a great point, though. That bails out Oklahoma State. Gonna find Tylen Wallace, who's right here in the slot. He's been your go-to receiver all season long. And now Oklahoma's gonna play a soft, too deep coverage. Should be able to find windows underneath that. Rushing three. Cornelius steps and fires. Has a man. It's caught. It's Tylen Wallace indeed for the touchdown. And we are an extra point away from a tie football game. An extra point that Matt Amendola missed on his previous try. With 63 seconds left in regulation. Big time throw and catch. And when you have fourth down, take it to your best receiver. He's been there for you all season long. Great job. And now the question is, do you want to go for two a la Dana West Virginia and Dana Holgerson? I completely agree if, if Gundy decides to go for two. Three all seconds the time on the play clock. All the time out, get the right play called. But your defense has been a sieve the entire game. And Todd, I don't know, you agree with this? I certainly do. Absolutely. And, and just 
you got to remember, too, what's the headspace of your kicker, Amendola? Struggled all day. He struggled for a couple of weeks. I think I think you go for two, and I, I don't think you think about it. And the, and the holder, too, Todd. The holder, Matt Hockett, was right. the one who didn't spin the ball and let the laces out. So both of those guys, although you'd like to think they could execute an extra point, you're not going to make a decision based on that. I think this is all about being aggressive. It's in Mike Gundy's DNA. He saw what Dana Holgerson did a couple of weeks ago for West Virginia, and he's not going to hesitate. You can read Holgerson's lips prior to that. Go win the game is what he said to West Virginia, and they did. There's a timeout. Penalty flag had to go and do it again, but Will Greer made it happen. And what are you going to do? You're going to put Tylen Wallace again, probably line him up on the outside, and if he gets a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with Trey Brown, which it looks like he might, here's Trey Brown and here's Tylen Wallace, why wouldn't you throw the ball up and give him a chance? Now, the game wouldn't be over. Oklahoma still have plenty of time. Two timeouts and a minute three left. Here we go. Looking for the lead. Cornelius behind the way. Trey Brown on the coverage. And the two-point conversion fails. I understand the design of this play, but it's a difficult throw for a quarterback. And Taylor Cornelius threw it way behind Tyler Wallace. He was there for a split second, just trying to run a quick flat. This is called spread right option. And you get on the move as a quarterback, and sometimes your accuracy suffers. And you see that ball needs to be out here. Instead, it's back here. And it's an easy play for Trey Brown. And Taylor Cornelius knows he missed it. Cornelius has had a brilliant game, 34 of 53. He's passed for 501 yards and needed two yards there passing. You see, that, if that ball was on time and out front, They can manage to stop Oklahoma on three consecutive plays, not give them a first down. They'll have a little uh, less than a minute. Good flag here. Zeros on the play clock. And a conversation. Delay a game, defense, five yard penalty, first down. That's a critical mistake. Trey Sermon. He's got the first down. Clock will stop to move the sticks. will spend a timeout there. And when we're comparing everyone to Alabama as the standard, Crimson Tide have backed the shutouts the last couple of weeks. That's their defense. Here's Sermon. He'll be dragged down. Calvin Bundage. And it's We've seen 1,342 yards of offense combined. That's the most for a game of the FBS this season. But listen, a win is a win is a win. Is, especially is it a win a win? In a game like this. this if I'm on the committee right I'm giving Oklahoma credit for this win. this is a gritty gutty team with an unbelievable offense an unbelievable quarterback and one of the best coaches on the planet yes they have some issues on the defensive side but you could make arguments against Michigan offensively too you could make arguments against Georgia I mean I think well, it's going to be a very interesting end of this season but Oklahoma had to take care of business here tonight they did it it was close but uh, give them credit, give Lincoln Riley credit. They made the plays they had to win. Final seconds will tech down. Matt Amendola, the missed extra point. With 48-47 with zeros 
on the clock. And a great big fan to Oklahoma State, too. Mike Gundy with the guts to go for it in that situation. You know, people will second guess that until the cows come home, and I thought it was the right decision. And give credit to Taylor Cornelius. Played a whale of a football game, just didn't come up at the end. 500 yards of passing. Down to the field, top of check. Uh, Lincoln, you're not in a lot of these close ones. So what did you learn about your team tonight? Yeah, we, we didn't have our best, and uh, Oklahoma State, give them credit, man. They played fantastic. Their quarterback played great, and uh, yeah, we just found a way. You know, made some huge plays defensively, forced a fumble, stopped the two-point play, weren't at our best there, and then, you know, offensively were bad in the third quarter and came back and found a way to win. Hey, you, you gave up a lot of yards, a lot of points, but your defense makes the play at the end. What are your impressions of your defense tonight? We made big plays, but we got to certainly play better. You know, we gave up some big ones early, and then, you know, that makes you a little conservative after that, so we got to continue to improve. Congratulations. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. November, the Matt Amendola missed extra point. Out of the hold from Matt Hockett. They'll be talking about that, and then they'll be talking about Oklahoma being one accurate pass away from being two losses and out of the college football playoff conversation. This ball's thrown accurate. It's a conversion for two points and a win, and a huge upset for Oklahoma State inches away. In the 113th edition of Bedlam, it goes to Oklahoma. They beat Oklahoma State 48-47.